Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a little mixed media workshopping. We're gonna use um, this paint, which I had a few people ask me about, uh, the PBO Prisma paints, Prisma Fantasy. There's also the um, uh, PBO Moon Fantasy paints, and they're very similar. They give you this kind of um, honeycomb or hammered finish. The Prisma gives you, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Please, excuse me if I'm not. Um, the Prisma gives you a honeycomb type look and the Moon gives you a more hammered finish. And I remember actually using a paint like that uh, back um, in high school that you could get at the hardware store made by Rust-Oleum. Very similar finish. So what I've done, um, actually a couple of weeks ago, I played with that paint and I made um, some different different little charms that I could use um, in projects here. I filled some cabochons with them um, that I already had. They were 25 cents a piece at a stamp show. I couldn't resist them and I bought a ton, so I thought it was a great place to experiment. And I also flattened some bottle caps. So to flatten a bottle cap, there's two ways to do it. You want uncirculated bottle caps, and you can get those at a, a brewery or um, like a health food store that sells beer making supplies. And what I did was I put it through my die cutter machine between two the two um, plexiglass plates. And I have a Big Shot and I use the multi-purpose platform with none of the tabs. So it just made it a little bit less um, tight. And then I was able to crank it through. You can also use a rubber mallet to um, flatten these out. Now, uh, if you're buying like scrapbooking bottle caps, which they used to be really popular, you might have some in your stash. They're not going to have this um, this rubber waxy ring in the middle. So for this one, I actually removed it. And the way I removed it was I um, heated it with my heat gun. And be very careful because your bottle cap's going to get hot. And I used uh, tweezers to kind of pe peel out the uh, the uh, waxy plasticky stuff. Um, it took a couple minutes, um, and then it gives you a nice flat surface that you can work in. But I actually have to say that I liked leaving the uh, seal in there because then I had like two chambers in which to fill with colors, and I thought it just was interesting looking. And so I ended up just leaving the seals in there. I'm going to show you, um, filling these in a minute. Now, I also was thinking, okay, what if you don't have bottle caps? What if you don't have cabochons? You know, I was trying to think of an inexpensive way to do this project. So what I did was I took a chipboard um, shape and I went around it with some foil tape and left the foil tape sticking straight up and then I poured the stuff in there. Um, it's got a cool look. You can really see the, um, the, you know, the texture on the surface that you get. Um, with these paints very well this way, but um, I really think it's still kind of flexible and I think that it will crack and um, won't be very durable if you're using it for jewelry. You could totally do this for um, an ornament though and it would be really pretty. In fact, what I'd probably do for an ornament would be leave, don't bend down the foil at all, leave it straight up, fill one side, let it sit for a couple weeks, flip it over, then fill the other side. Um, because that is something with this paint, you do have to let it dry. The other thing about this paint is that you have to stir it before every use. So I've already gone ahead and stirred it. I found that if you take a toothpick and you just kind of swirl it like that, the bottom of the toothpick r runs around the bottom of the jar perfectly and that's just the quickest way to get it mixed up. When you first buy it, it's going to take you a while to mix these up. I tried shaking, it didn't work, you really need to stir it and uh, be prepared to spend like half an hour stirring this paint the first time you use it. Probably the second time will take you 15 or 20 minutes, so just to let you know. These are the small bottles and they came in this kit uh, that I picked up on clearance at a big box store because quite frankly I wasn't going to pay 40 bucks for this thing of tiny bottles of paint. It wasn't happening and I saw it for like 14 so I snagged it. Um, of course, if your big box store carries this as a regular item, you could always use a coupon on it or look around online and see if you can find a deal because I think the stuff is pretty expensive, especially in the larger full size bottles of it. And I saw a lot of tutorials online. Uh, this, this came out probably about two years ago and people were using canvases, canvas boards, not a stretch canvas because you want a rigid, um, a rigid surface for this. It's not going to bend or flex. And they were using these canvas panels that had like a little lip around the edge and they were just pouring the stuff in like it was water. And I'm thinking it's cool looking, but you're looking at like a hundred dollars in materials before you done. They were emptying bottles on these canvases. And while it's, you know, it's none of my business how, how anyone wants to make their art, I just thought it was really expensive. Um, and, you know, only spending 10 minutes on a piece of artwork and just letting the paint do its thing. I mean, for me, a lot of the art is your intent and what you're trying to put into the piece and how much intent can you put in for, for in 10 minutes. I mean, definitely cool decoration, just resurface a countertop, something, yeah, very cool looking. I don't want to, you know, negate that at all, but I just thought, holy cow, if people buy that paint and use it like that, these, this company's going to be rich because they were just using so much product that it, for me, it felt very wasteful. Um, 
very cool looking art don't get me wrong but it seemed a little wasteful I anyway that's that's just my opinion we welcome yours um so yes i got this kit regular 39 dollars, and i paid like 14 so you know shop around i i wouldn't pay 40 40 dollars for that uh so because of the paint being expensive even though i got a good deal on it i didn't want to do large projects because i thought that that's just um that would be kind of it would be very expensive and i think it would be out of a lot of people's reach to do projects like that so I'm going to show you how to fill one of these. Um, let's do that first. Let me just show you how to fill one of these little um, frames. And let's see. Where are my frames? They were right here. Oh, would you know? I probably put away the thing I need. Oh, here we go. So I've got this little frame. And let's see. It's 25 cents. <laughs> remove, probably would want to remove any price stickers before you begin this process. Because once you fill this, you have to let it sit. I'm just going to go ahead and fill it. Uh, just so you know. Um, and as far as choosing colors, you can choose whatever you think will look nice together. They almost repel each other a little bit, which is kind of fun. Um, the light fastness on these colors were all except for the vermilion, which is this kind of orangey color, were all uh, excellent. And uh, this one was very good. So um, a light fastness, light fast product. I don't know how concerned you would be about that. Um, well, I guess if you were making, if you were spending $100 worth of paint and you were making, you know, a painting with it, then yeah, definitely. But um I just wanted to let you know. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for this part, and I'm going to take this off my tray and just put this on my table. That way you can see really well what we're doing here. Okay. And I, gosh, I hope this isn't dull. Um, there's just a lot of different aspects to this paint I want to show you. Um, so that way you can decide if it's something that you're going to want. So to transfer this into the... Um, into the little charm without a lot of waste. I think it's it's smart to use a toothpick or a barbecue skewer, or maybe even a um, maybe even like a uh, popsicle stick. And I'm just tapping it to get this pretty much off of the stick. You're going to need a pretty thick layer. If you don't put enough paint, then you're not going to get that effect of the honeycomb look, and it does shrink a little bit while it dries. So even if you fill this to the top it's going to shrink down like these were pretty much filled to the top and you can see if I tip it how it's kind of stuck to the edges but it really just kind of clung to the bottoms and sides and there's really it's really not full you could top this up with resin or something if you wanted to have a nice um you know flush flush look and this is compatible re with resin I didn't use it with any wet resin because um the resin that I use, I really need to have a warmer weather than I have in my studio, and I don't want to stink up the house with it. Um, I want something that's going to contrast, so I think I'll go with some gold. And um, I'm going to give it another stir because the mica flakes, the mica powder, whatever mica is in there, it kind of settles away. So I want to make sure that it's not going to, that I'm getting everything that I need in there to get the effect to happen. So now I, I don't want quite as much of my thing this time I'm just gonna put in a couple drops and I'm gonna try not to mix it I want it to do its own thing and it's gonna take a little bit to see the effect so probably by the time we're at the end of this video which I said will probably be a little longer you'll be able to see the effects um, it doesn't happen that quickly um, It'll take about take a couple minutes to see that effect. I really don't want to disturb it too much because I don't want to get that all mixed up. I want them to kind of resist each other a little bit. So here is the bottle cap with the seal intact. If you want to remove it again, heat it with a heat tool carefully. Hold it with tweezers and peel it out. It's a little time consuming, um, but you totally can do that. We're just going to set that out of the way a little bit. And let's do um, let's do some different colors on this one. Uh, oh, and there's something else that I want to try too. I want to try, you can use these with oil, uh, like Alkid paints. Um, PBO makes some glass paint, stained glass paint called vitrol, vitriol, I think. Um, maybe that's not right. That sounds like the word when you're saying garbage, right? I, maybe that's not the name of it. Uh, but it's, it's a glass paint that begins with a V that you can use with that so that you can um, get those cool effects, but you could have something that doesn't have mica in it. So you could lean everything into that center chamber. I should have been a little more careful there because I got some on the outside. And then we'll do another color on the outside. Let's do let's do this pearl color on the outside. You can see how quickly it settles. I think that the, that settling of the mica um, is kind of what gives it that effect. Oops, and I got that right way. I'm holding this way away from myself. You know, okay, maybe, you know what, I'll put the 
I'll put the white in the middle and then I'll get a totally different color for the outside because I've botched that. But that's kind of part of the fun with this project is that you can um, you can do whatever you want, you know, there's no mistakes or you're, you're just experimenting. Um, so the disappointing thing about this, and it's not a big deal because I didn't really have a lot of time to play with it, is, is the dry time. You really have to wait. Uh, oh, goodness sakes, I messed that up again. Um, you do have to wait a while for it to dry. Um, it will be tacky probably in a day or two, but you really need to give it time to cure before you use it or you'll be leaving like fingernail indents. When it does dry, you get a really, um, you get a really nice glossy hard surface that shouldn't need a varnish like even if you are using it for a painting um, I think this would be really pretty for ornaments because um, ornaments are something you keep year after year it's always nice to have a, a cool different um, you know technique for them I think maybe I'll try dragging this you know what let me get a thinner needle tool because um, I think I got my jewelry stuff over here I think that if I had a needle tool it wouldn't be leave such a it would just be a little more gentle of a effect. I'm going to try just kind of marbleizing it a little bit. I don't know if that will work. It's pretty juicy paint. Oh yeah, I can get a little bit of a marble. I got to go in one direction then go back the other way. And so this looks really filled up and you're probably thinking, well, it's filled up to the top. I'm not even going to see those, um, that, that kind of border. So why bother removing it at all? But you do, can you see that little lip, that little ridge? My fingernail catches it. If I run, you can hear it. See my fingernail catches on that. So it is going to be there when that paint shrinks down. So if you do not want that bullseye effect, you want to remove that from your, um, from your, your bottle cap. I think I might add some of this kind of a darker blue in there too. You can start to see the effect happening on this one because we have a little bit larger of a space, I think. I really enjoy the fact that you don't quite know what you're going to get. There we go. Now, if I was going to just use this as a simple charm, I could glue a bale on the back of that, and I'll d demonstrate that a little bit later. I obviously can't move this or do much to this now, or I'm going to, um, I'm going to mess it up. So uh, that's just using the uh, Prism Fantasy paints on its own. But you probably like me, and you have other products, so let's try mixing them with some uh, oil and alkyd. So what I have here is this um, solvent-free gel. It is a Gamblin Alkyd medium. Alkyd is an oil-based paint and I will be able to hopefully uh, mix this with a little I have mixed it with oil before so I know I'm fine so I'm gonna mix a little bit with the oil uh, alkyd paint is generally um, quicker drying than your typical oil paint a lot of time sign painters use it house painters use it I think I want to go in with um, I want to use black which is great because I never seem to use my black um, oil paint so that'll that'll work out and I'm just gonna mix up some paint to use um, on my project I've got a palette knife here because I uh, I think I want to use a softer, more delicate brush on this, and I don't want to um, I don't want to mix with my more dainty, delicate brushes because it could harm them. I feel like I want a little bit more gel in there just to get the get it a little bit um, more flowy. I had to smell this. This has like no smell to it. It's solvent free, which is uh, which is nice if you're bothered by smells. I love the smell of like linseed oil and oil paint. Uh, I don't know what it is about it. I just, it's such a lovely smell. Probably because my my um, my mother was my parents at a construction business, and my mother did all the painting and staining. And I just remember going to job job sites when I was really little and uh, just smelling that. Okay, so there we have our um, our mix there. So what I'm going to do, and I think any uh, I think black's going to look really pretty because let's like whenever you do like any crafting and you're using black, you know, using mica products, they always look fantastic on black. So I just have to make sure I get enough in there that the paint, that the prism paint will be able to do its thing. So I am putting a generous amount. I'm not painting it really thinly. And this is the first time I've done this, so we're totally workshopping this. I really hope that it's helpful for you guys. Okay, so, and I can also wipe off my finger. That's why I have a that's why I have a paper on my table because I can just wipe my fingers on it if I need to. And uh, let's zoom in again so you can see that a little bit closer and I will move it in front of the camera. 
We'll just readjust here. There we go. And let's uh, let's start putting some color in. Um, I think I will try, I don't think we've used the purple. Oh, you know what? Our purple has completely fallen into that pig, the thing we just did and it has gone away. So you just never know. You just never know what's gonna happen as the things dry. Uh, so I am going to drop some of that in. And I think I'll do some of this um, pretty turquoise color. Actually, you know what? I haven't used this color, I don't think. What is this? This is antique gold. Let's try some of that. That purple has kind of like a gold undertone to it. It's really pretty. Oh, no, go some on top of those and also on the edge. So it's not moving around a ton here like it did with the... Uh, when I was just using the prism paint, maybe I don't have it thin enough, but um, but it's kind of cool how you can kind of control your shapes a little bit more when you've got this thicker paint underneath. I just hope it makes the reaction that I need for it to. I'm just gonna I'm just grabbing a little bit of this color. I just hope it makes the reaction that I want it to as it dries. All right. Now I think I also. Um, well, you know what? Maybe we should let this one dry and then because I want to experiment with that on a plaque as well. Because this will be, if this works, it'll be really, oh, it looks like a face. Doesn't it? <laughs> That's kind of cute. All right. So we're going to set that down. I am going to put that with the other ones to dry and I am going to get this plexiglass plate here and I'm just going to pause this while I unwrap it because I have a really hard time getting these, this film off of here. Okay, I've got the top layer off of that plaque so it's just kind of, you can see it's just kind of shiny there. And uh, what I was thinking would be cool is to get a cool um, kind of marbly look on this and then um, put these charms, glue these charms and this um, pendant that I made on top and then either make a brooch or a front pen, front part of a necklace or a pin or something out of that. So that's kind of my plan with this. Sometimes plans change, but I just wanted to show you that's what I ultimately intend to do with this plaque. Um, I'm going to start by brushing on this uh, oil paint here that's been added with the, um, with the Alkid medium. And I did scratch the front of this panel a little bit when I was trying to remove the um, the protective coating. So I'm like, I'll just be really careful when I remove the back one so I don't have a scratch. And that way I'll have the, I, I can see how it looks from front and back. And I mean, if I can see some of these cool colors on the back, then I might just go ahead and, you know, have that side showing. I'm not exactly sure which side's going to look better. So I think I'm going to start with some of this. I'm just kind of drizzle it in. Um, I definitely think that using this um, oil paint the way I did gives it a lot more control. Like I don't feel like it's going to run over the edge like I do when I'm just using the fantasy paint on its own. You can see it's getting like it's starting to separate a little bit and you can start to see that um, the cool effects that it has right off the bat. I decided to go with a variety pack. Well, for one, it was on sale. Um, and, you know, because I, I think you'd want a few colors to play with, I don't think you'd have as much versatility if you just had one color. I mean, maybe if you used a bunch of different colors of oil and maybe just had like a gold or a, a pearl or something, it would look cool. But I think that if you can find a good price on a set, you're probably a little bit better off. And I'm not sure if I'm loving this or not, but I've got plenty of room to play with it, which is nice. Um, I'm not sure if that loose colors are going to look with, <laughs> with what I've already done. And again, don't forget to stir it up every time. I feel like Jackson Pollock here, making some funky splatter art. I want to see what happens if we tip it. 
I think if I had like the glass paint that they sell, it would be definitely more a runny. I think that the um, oil that I used is definitely kind of keeping it in check. Yeah, it's hardly moving at all when I tip it, so I guess if you want, it is a little bit, I think, I guess if you want more of a flowy look, then you'd probably want to use their brand of, uh, of glass paint. I'm going to wipe off my palette knife on my paper here, and I'm going to try to get that a little bit cleaner. I'm going to see if I can kind of marbleize it a little bit. Oh, that might be a bit much, I think. Maybe go back in with the uh, needle tool. Oh yeah, that works much better. It's definitely interesting stuff. I know I'm getting kind of a cool look. I think you could definitely like fake um, Mother of Pearl and all sorts of other little um, gemstones that way if like you did the, the uh, back of like some flat back marbles or something. I just think that when you're working on small projects like this, you can get the most out of this product because like I mentioned, it is kind of expensive. So if you can, if you can use it on a small scale and get that, you know, get that really cool effect on something where it's really going to be noticeable. That's the best way to use it. Now this looks pretty darn cool. I'm going to bring it up and you can see how glossy it is. It's going to keep that gloss, but it is going to level out a little bit more as far as like, um, not having as much texture to it. If I pick up like this one, which is pretty much flat, you can see it does level out quite a bit or a better example would be that star that I did. This is kind of the texture that you get. It's It has a little bit of a, a hammered appearance, but it is definitely flat. You know, it's not, you don't have the big bumps like I do here. It is it is such a pretty, uh, pretty technique though. So I probably want to set this, well, it's not, it's not dripping through the holes. There's a couple little holes on the edge for making this into something. Um, it kind of looks like a belt buckle actually, um, but it's not really dripping through. So I guess I'm all right. And I'm glad I kept the paper on the back because I've already smudged my finger on the back with some stuff on it. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that will happen. Um, so let's take a look. Actually, before we do that, let me clean up my mess. Uh, we'll become, we'll come right back and we'll make some jewelry with the ones that have dried. And then we'll look at the first things that we poured and see how they look. I started to make a pendant with this. Um, these are little like nail art bottles of glitter you can get at the Dollar Tree and they have a cute little hole in the top. I thought that would be really cute attached to this triangular pendant. And then I found this Fleur de Lis, which is also the same kind of antique gold finish. And I loved it, but I didn't have any, there's like all these, um, uh, facets for putting in uh, crystals and I didn't have any crystals that fit. So I thought this would be a perfect situation to use this um, in a very smart manner because um, that way you're not putting, you know, you don't have to go and find expensive crystals. You could go and just use this. So I'm going to try to carefully uh, fill these little holes with the, um, with the fantasy paint. And I'm finding a toothpick works really well. Again, like I mentioned, I am standing way back. So it's a lot better if you can get in a little, your like head in a little closer where you're working so that you can um, really see where the tip of that toothpick is coming down with the um, paint on it. But like you can see, I overfilled that part. Hopefully it's not gonna be a big deal, but you get that cool enameled look without having to have enameling supplies or torches or anything. So I really think that is a, is a fantastic way to use this. And it's a good idea to have this somewhere where you can let it sit. I'm just concerned with that stuff that just spilled across the back. I don't know if I can, I'm gonna try taking a clean toothpick and seeing if I can clean that out a little bit because I really want to let it dry on this, um, on this mat. I, it's unclear whether I'll be able to go in there with anything and, um, and clean off the dry paint because like I mentioned, it's a really hard glossy surface. So well, it is almost like an enamel actually. So, oh, look at that. You're able to, so just take a clean toothpick. I'm just wiping it off on a baby wipe in between swipes and I've just pulled out the excess that was spilling over. 
Now I'm not sure if I can go in with any other colors on that or if I'm gonna make it, um, if I'm gonna make it kind of come out. I feel like there's one little this area that needs a little bit more. But I was thinking I'd like to get that two-tone look that I had in the the big the big pendant there. So I'm gonna try it. So we'll just you know we'll see. And if if I overfilled it and that's not a possibility, you will know before you start your project. So I'm gonna give it a go. I think it'll be pretty to have a little bit of. Can we do it? Can we do it? Is it gonna stay? I think so. I'm gonna give it a little uh, drop on two other ones just so it matches. And what I'm gonna to wanna to do is set this somewhere where it can be undisturbed. Um, it's probably a good idea to keep an eye on it. And then if I see that that addition there is making it flood over the edge, then I'll just go in and swipe it with a clean toothpick again. And in fact, I'll just leave that right here. I'll leave the wipe and the toothpick right on the tray with it just so I remember to check it before I go upstairs. But I think that's going to be really pretty when it dries and then I didn't have to go and find the exact size crystals for those. Now we're going to take a look at some of the pieces that you might use uh, to make your jewelry. Um, I have some bales and what these are are glue on um, findings that have a loop on them so you can put them on a string to make a necklace. Uh, sometimes people will also put a pin on the back and you can get pin, pin backs that have these attached so that the uh, the pendant can be worn as a brooch or as a necklace because sometimes with the larger pieces people would, would rather um, would rather wear them. I just realized I set something into our pieces that were driving, drying so I'm just readjusting there. Oh my. Okay. We're, we're, we're no problems. Problems. Tragedy averted. We're, we're good. Um, so there are different styles. These are all fairly plain. Um, I found best prices on these to be on like um, Etsy or eBay. Uh, they tend to even be less expensive than Oriental Trading or Fire Mountain Gems, which is where I get most of my other um, jewelry making supplies. So I do do a little searching around. I think there are sellers on Etsy that buy in humongous quantities and they can sell like like a dozen at a reasonable rate. And it's not like you're gonna go through tons of them, but they are very handy to have. Now, if these aren't in your budget, um, I try to get them, I try to not pay more than like 25 to 50 cents a piece, but it's easy to pay three or $4 each for these little loops, which I think is kind of crazy because they're not made out of gold or anything. Um, if that's out of your budget or you just can't find them, then you can use wire and you can just use your pliers to make some loops that you can glue. I'd make like kind of like a number, number eight and then I would just glue one loop onto the back of the um, the uh, cabochon and then have the other loop for hanging just make sure you give it plenty of time to dry and the other thing that you're, you're probably going to want to have because they're fun are different charms and these can be picked up in the jewelry department of any of your big box stores or you can find them online um, there are lots of places that sell really fun different things that you can use I really love these wings and these are actually pretty heavy duty so I thought that these would be good for working with um, with one of these bottle caps. I believe I got these from Butterbean Scraps um, online and they have a really good selection of filigrees like uh, metal filigrees and stuff. So what I was thinking was that this one that has a lot of really earthy tones, um, I just really like the way that came out in those colors. I thought that with these wings and a silver... Um, a silver cabochon, a silver bale would look really pretty. And um, I just think it's, I don't know, it, it, oh, it kind of reminds me of like Hunger Games or something. It's, I guess it's a little dystopian looking, but, um, but I just think it's kind of, it's kind of pretty and, and freeing looking and whatnot. So I have this at an angle, so the glare's not too bad. That's why it's sliding all over the place. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna do some gluing. You're gonna need a really strong adhesive that is also kind of thick so it can marry these different textures together. Cause what we have is, um, and I'm using liquid welder, but you could use, oh, wow. I'm glad I have stuff on my table. Um, you could use E6000 or Goop or, um, uh, those two are good. E6000 Goop or Liquid Welder. If you have some other one part epoxy, that would work as well. So with this, I probably just put way too much on there, but I do need to marry these different items together. You want to get um, a coating on each of the items that you're going to glue, okay? So I'm kind of using the um, ball cap as my applicator. I probably did get a little too much, but um, we do have to marry these items because they're all different textures and they're all different, um, different, 
sizes and uh, depths. So I just put I put a layer on that one. I'm going to get a layer on, let's see, on the top of this wing. I only want to get the area that's going to be that's going to be touching, so I'm just scraping up a little bit there. I'm going to set that aside. Um, and then I'm going to get a little bit on that edge, set that aside, and just kind of smooth that out. So basically what you want to do, and now if, if I stuck these together, they'd probably be fine, but I think they might shift a little bit um, while they're drying, like they might slide. So I'm going to set these pieces aside and I'm going to, for five minutes, and I'm going to let that set up and then I'll press these pieces together and we'll have our item. So in five minutes, we're going to do that. So while that's drying, I had this other filigree that I thought was pretty. Now you can combine combine the filigrees with items that already have their loops, and uh, and that looks really nice. Or you can do what I just did there and add a bail to it. Um, if you're going to do a pin though, I and you know like this one, I actually do have a little hole there, so I don't think I'd add a bail to that. I think what I would do is just do my um, my liquid welder. Since this is such that's such a light. Uh, filigree there and there's a lot of little holes in there that the glue can squish through and lock it down I don't think I need to do two layers and put them apart um, because I know they're those are these are a fairly easy to glue uh, situation here so I'm gonna press it I'm gonna look on the back and I can see I don't know if you can see that or not but I can see the glue being squished through one of that one of those holes at least one so I know that that's going to connect and that's going to marry well and that glue is getting in there and attaching both pieces plus because there's so much texture on this and it's only one piece I have to put together, I can I can just push it there, I can flip it over so the glue's not gonna touch anything and I can let that dry because I could tell that it really got in there. This is a really lightweight piece and um, and I know it's not gonna slide because of all the texture on the, the ridges of the bottle cap and that. So that's why I'm not gonna do that technique on this. Uh, it's just that would be a little bit of a waste of time. So that's a side to dry. And then I thought that this also would be kind of pretty with with a bottle cap in the middle of it, but this is going to need a bail. Um, so I'll I'll need to do, well, you know, since this has so much open area, I might be able to do that same technique with this, but I can tell pretty quickly by putting my adhesive in here. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it like I did the last time, that was a little much. Um, I can tell by putting that in there, I can almost feel if it's gonna grab it or not. I can see the adhesive you probably can't see it because there's so much shine on there. I can see it though coming through those holes. So I think I'm going to be all set. Now the tricky thing will be what bale to use and and am I going to need to wait to glue the bale down. So the bale will go there. Actually, I think I can go ahead and put the bale on right now. So I just don't want to do too much. Um, you just got to use your best judgment. Um, but rule of thumb is if it's really looks like it's going to be tough to glue or it feel you think it's going to slide apart because you got heavy metal pieces then um, then let the layers let the layers dry in between so I'm just going to snug that right in there I can see that it's grabbing really well it's marrying really well and so now I'm going to set this aside I can see it I can see through the wing so I can see it's well centered I'm not guessing there that's the other thing if you're if you can't see through the your wings or whatever you're putting on your and you're guessing do the light layers, let it let it dry for five minutes and then tack it together. I think it's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those pieces that we started with. Okay, they're still tacky. And it doesn't really matter what side's up on this. I just think that's those colors are really pretty together. And that's a thing, you experiment and you find some really cool um, combinations that you might not have, have thought about before. So now, oh yeah, now see, now it's going to grab really well and it's not falling off when I stick it on there. So I can, I can adjust it a little bit because it is still wet, but I can, I don't have to worry about it falling while I'm working. You can see how it's made like a little skin coat and it's kind of pushed it because it is starting to dry. Um, you do want to allow 24 hours before you attempt to like wear this jewelry or anything um, because it's not going to be fully cured. This is a one part epoxy and it needs that time. And then I can cut, it's almost easier to make sure it's symmetrical by looking at the back. And these wings actually do have little holes in them for uh, wiring or attaching jump rings. So I can actually press that and make sure that glue's coming through the holes to know that I'm gonna get a good, um, a good adhesion. And you can see that's really pretty, but if you need to adjust it, you still can. I still don't wanna leave it that way. I wanna let it dry on its face because um, these wings are heavier than the other filigree and they're gonna fall. So just find a nice non-porous surface to let that dry on. 
Um, and let's see, the other thing I just wanted to touch on really quick um, is just some other ways you can, because like these have loops on them, if you're working with something like this, a charm that's got like a frame, you have, um, you can start creating with it as soon as it's dry. And what I've done here, I've got some examples for you. Um, I basically have been playing with my supplies. I took um, a jump ring, which is a, which is a ring made of wire, and I attached this charm to uh, one of the loops on this Tim Holtz gear. And then I actually just took a Tim Holtz little chain with a clip on it and attached that there. And then I had some leftover um, wire, uh, leftover chain with faceted beads on it and just hooked that to the end. I can clip this onto any short necklace and have that really fun dangly pendant. Um, this one right here, I actually took a part of necklace that I made a while ago that was made with that same chain. And I just hooked little hearts, uh, so Swarovski hearts, I'm saying that, I have a hard time with that word, and I put those on there, so that's kind of pretty, and because there's chain all the way through, if I wanted to attach more jump rings with other uh, beads on it, I totally could, but I kind of like the simplicity of this, or I could even take some other, um, some other gears and kind of tuck them in behind and give it more of a steampunk theme out of a few of those, I could Put on a bottle of glitter if I wanted to. You know, the, the possibilities are endless. You can always let it sit for a bit and then decide if you want to add more. And this last example I want to show you is, um, uh, oh, you know what? We already did that. That was the fleur de lis that we added our, um, our color to. So now what I want to do is, um, cause we've had all those different ideas. I might put some more ideas on my blog when I post this video on my blog in a couple of days. So stay tuned for that. I want to show you our things that have been drying that we worked on so that you can kind of see, um, how they change. And let's see, I think this was the first one we did. Remember we put the, uh, we put the polka dots, I think we did gold and we put blue polka dots in it and now they've kind of mixed and we've got this interesting um, pebbly texture. This one has a very marbly texture to it, very glossy, it almost looks like marble. And um, this one, the purple kind of sunk in and we have a really neat look there. This one really, um, to me, shows the effect of this paint the best probably because you see all those tiny little cells all those tiny little like honeycomb shapes kind of like you're looking in a in a honeycomb or a wasp nest kind of um since it was filled so high everything kind of mixed together but it's pretty and it's it definitely could go with a lot of different color schemes because it's so neutral this one here where we did the black oil paint underneath with the alkyd medium has not um blended too much so what i think i'd like to try to do is add a little more color to this and see what happens so oh you can see it's made of like a skim coat there. I'm not sure if I should move it, but I am. Uh, oh, there's there. That's kind of a cool, a cool look. I think I'm going to add um, one more of this gold. You can see how it starts to settle in the in the jar. That's why you want to keep those toothpicks in there while you're working, so that you can um, you can stir it as you go. I'm not sure if I like using the oil paint on a small piece like this. I almost think you need that, you need like the big kind of object like that where you can um, have the room to kind of mix it around and force a move. Now, if you're using the uh, the PBO paints that are designed for that, I think it would probably, it, from what I've seen online, it moves a lot better, but I just didn't want to go to that expense where I already had... Um, so many supplies at home already. I like to see if what I have will work before I go out and uh, and buy something new. And I mean, I probably won't go buy it. I am pretty happy just experimenting with this. And I've also noticed that sometimes I get better results than other, other times, even though I've done the same thing, I still get different results. I do kind of like how I can break the surface and reveal that black underneath. That kind of gives it a neat look. Um, so I guess my advice would be to just experiment. I'm going to try picking up some of that black and putting it in on top. Let's see what happens there. It t tends to fall through. It's falling through to the bottom because it's, I don't know, it's the mica is kind of enveloping it, I guess. Unless I stir it, then I can pull it up a little bit, but it's definitely not, uh, not the best use of that, but it's still kind of cool looking. I like the abstract um, kind of art deco look that these have. It's uh, it's something fun and something new and uh, something that I hope you try. So when that's dry, what I originally intended, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, is I was going to put make a collage of these gears 
and glue them on top of that. Um, I'm not sure if I want to cover that much up anymore, so I think I'm going to see if I have something in the studio that I could actually glue that to, because I, oh, and you can't even see that. Ah, let's do that again. Uh, there's my little collage. I want to collage those gears together and put them on something. So let me see what I have and see if I can come up with something to do with that right now before we go today. I found this piece of black acrylic. Uh, this is by Craft Chameleon. This is the same company that made that. I wish I'd had one of those just in black. And I think, oh, you can see my lights, my fancy hardware store lights. They're reflected. And I think I will glue these onto this. Um, and I don't want to use the, um, I don't want to use the liquid welder. In fact, I'm going to cap that right up so it doesn't clog up on me because I'm afraid that this might disintegrate the acrylic. So I'm going to actually use Beacon 3-in-1 and um, hopefully that is strong enough to glue everything. I think I am going to try to do a nice even coating on the back of these gears and it always takes a while for this to, this to float down to the tip but I do like this glue because it's it grabs really quick it's almost like a um, like a hot glue but a cold hot glue I guess and I'm gonna deal with any overspill of the glue because I think I probably will get some because I'm doing like slick objects to slick objects I'm gonna deal with any overspill by maybe sprinkling in some microbeads so it'll be kind of a just a fun multimedia project I think in fact I might even want to encourage that so I get some interesting oh I've got some glass glitter that I bought last fall at Michael's when I went to Michael's and Augusta. I think that I will use some of that. That'll be pretty. See, we're totally workshopping in here, guys. We are just doing stuff as it comes to as it comes to our minds. Okay, I think I want to get that one up there. I don't know exactly what this would be used for. If I would use it maybe as an ornament on the Christmas tree or just maybe attach some maybe drill some holes and attach some wind chimes to it or use some bales or some wire on the back to put some wind chimes on there that would be pretty uh, this is just art for art's sake it's it's uh, it's just for, it's just for fun I'm just moving these out of the way these are still wet I don't want to uh, set anything in them by mistake I'll press that down hopefully that's enough glue to I don't think it is. I need more glue in there because it's not marrying to my surface. When I say it marrying, what I mean is that it's making connection between the embellishment, especially if it's concave, and the um, the substrate that I'm trying to attach it to. Okay. Well, now I'm saying that I didn't spill out as much glue as I thought, so I think I'm going to actually use another glue to uh, make some areas to put some glitter in. You know what? I had another idea. Instead of using more glue, I think, and these are my, this is the glass glitters I have there. Not as shiny as Mylar glitter, but they have more of a, a natural look. Um, I think I'm going to use some of these colors because now that I've put this, um, these gears down, I've got these natural recesses that I could fill with goodness. So I might not actually end up putting any glitter in those. I don't know. Let's see what happens. You're probably like, this video is way too long, Lindsay. What are you, you're crazy. And it'll be also interesting to see the how the this stuff reacts with the, you know what, maybe if I do have a lot of glue, I, will, I won't put the paint in areas with a lot of glue because I could actually use that for my, um, for my glitter. So maybe I'll just slide that over there. I don't think that this paint likes that glue. They're, the glue is water-based and the paint is an alkyd, so I think it's almost repelling that. I'll clean that up with a... See if I can clean that up a little bit with a Q-tip. Yeah, I can. So I'll put I'll put some glitter there. Um, let's go in with that orange. I want to use the colors I have been using so I don't get too much like color confusion and everything stays nice and harmonious. I could definitely feel this almost instant... Um, oh great. Okay, now we're going Pollock style. <laughs> That's all right. We can do that. Actually, no, we've got to do it on purpose. If you do it once, it's a mistake. You do it many times, it's a design element. Actually, I like that. It's kind of cool. <laughs> See, happy accidents. Happy little trees, happy accidents. I'll do that with this too. This is going to be really cool looking, actually, I think. I'll have to uh, let this dry and take photos. Um, for social media or something because this stuff takes a while to dry and I'm gonna go right over some of the things that I've already 
put because I need you kind of need the additional colors to interact with each other and give you that cool effect and then I do like this kind of coppery gold glitter and I'm just gonna try to sprinkle a little bit on in areas where I know I got too much glue and I'm just tapping it I don't want to smudge it I don't want to like rub it because um, it's going to it's gonna move my uh, my little gears around I will go try to wipe some of it off the gears just so I have so I can see them so you can see what they are clearly but um, I think that's kind of cool I want to do a little bit of purple inside that because I think that'll look cool and since I did spill it I'm gonna drizzle but there Sorry about that, my phone rang and I had to like, <laughs> I had to decide, am I gonna pause it? Am I gonna let it ring? I decided to go go see who it was and I didn't get there in time. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna let this dry. Obviously this thing still needs to dry, but I'm really happy with how uh, stony it looks. I think that's really pretty. Um, I wanna show you these other pieces. This is where we remember like about 20 minutes ago, we put some uh, color in there. It's holding up really well. And those are the pieces we just glued, which are dry to the touch, but I'm definitely gonna flip them back over on their front. And let them dry fully but um i hope you enjoyed this little workshop it was so fun to bring this product to you um uh, this is not a sponsored video i just kind of saw it on sale and decided to give it a try because some people had asked about it and i think it's super fun again this is the prism or prismy not sure if i'm saying it right paint from pbo it's part of their fantasy line and it is an elkid paint that does take a while to dry but i think it's really fantastic for jewelry purposes maybe a little too pricey for home decor or for artistic like painting large painting use but um as far as doing jewelry making i think it's wonderful because of the special effects that you can get in a little bit of time and then you can take those pieces and add them to your jewelry and really make some fantastic stuff so thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you like this video until next time happy crafting